Some of you might follow me on Facebook and know I'm having all this trouble with copyrighted music, even though I have the permission to use said copyright music. I'm having to re-edit, and this is one video I'm re-editing, and I uh, saw some value in this. I thought it'd be worth reposting to YouTube. We'll get to that a bit later. This might seem a bit of a waste, but those brown lines you can see, that's the pith of the tree, and they need to be removed because they're the least stable. What I want is the quarter sawn boards either side of the pith of the tree. When it comes to gluing edge grain to edge grain, you really don't need any reinforcement. I'm using dominoes here because I want the grain to match perfectly and I also do not want the boards to move whatsoever. I don't want them to be, you know, there'd be a sort of lip in the middle that I need to deal with later on and dominoes do that very effectively, much better than biscuits. I had this template kicking around. I keep all my templates, it's well worth it because if you're freehand designing like this, you, you might just find you've got a template that's got the curve you want and you can just use that instead of having to make one. But when you're doing something like this and it's going to meet the router cutter, this is probably your best time to choose the grain. You really you want rift sawn boards so the grain on two faces of the leg will look identical like a mirror image but what i'm trying to say is when you position and you're cutting your legs look at the grain make sure the grain is going to be stroked by the router the correct way not not like uh, stroking a cat backwards is the best way i can put it i use double-sided carpet tape for my templates uh, made by tessa it's extremely strong and it has never ever failed me you do not need a lot of it otherwise you will not get that template back off without tearing it all to pieces you may not have all of those front faces is all the same so if clamping them together and sanding them all at the same time will get them much closer but given it's the outside of the legs and you're nearly close that's no one's going to notice if you're slightly off now my only design brief i had was i wanted to make this top look like it's floating on dead space um it's kind of an egyptian vibe i had going in my mind back then and anyway i needed to so need to, in, in order to achieve that i needed to ebonize the legs but i need to transition the legs because the legs were coming up the same to the same height as the tabletop itself so somehow it needed to go from completely black to nice bare wood again hence what i'm doing here this is going to be my transition the rounding over the tops of the legs i just thought was a, a nice little detail i'm sawing this line to give me um, a bit of space to get some masking tape in there to protect the top half of the legs. That's really what that's about, but it's a nice detail as well. From then on in, it's a case of really ripping and cross-cutting everything to final dimensions, and you can see what I mean now by it being a little bit on the wasteful side, but uh, there is still useful bits of uh, wood left over from that. Just need to cut the pith out. I'm not sure where I got this oak from. It looks, well, the top is definitely English oak, but the rails etc are they look very much like joinery grade french european oak because it's damn boring and uh, the problems it gives me later on um, is i usually find happens with european french oak but it's bloody boring to look at so it's just as well it was going to get ebonized really I'm going to be using mortise and tenon joinery for this um, also known as dominoes i'm afraid because it's quick that rubber block you saw me using on the sander that is what you use the clean skateboard grip tape um in case you're wondering now the only reason this looks like i get it off the saw first go is because off camera i've actually milled exactly the same piece of stock cut it at the same time i made all of those all of that stock especially for test cuts so i do all my test cuts make sure it's absolutely perfect and then i'll take my my main piece to that saw and um, have that lovely perfect tight as can actually fit but really though it's just better to choose the wood with color naturally and it naturally has and use that like for ebony you use ebony wood but yeah money too tight to mention you're going to have to stain it um staining when you bash it or ding it it will show the natural colour of the wood for the stain that is the problem now to the meat and the potatoes of this video this is something i see coming up in wood groups all the time about how to ebonize wood um and almost everyone will say knock up some vinegar some wire wool some nails and all that sort of stuff and i can tell you what boiling vinegar and wire wool is not a nice affair and you best do it outside but why go to all of that trouble when it's not necessary and not to mention the fact that it really depends on the amount of tannin that's in the wood you're using i've tried doing this on beach and it barely changed the color of it this oak particularly wasn't 
nothing was happening. It looked like I hadn't done anything. And I had to then make up my own tannic acid tea, put that in, all, cover it all over it, let that soak in, and then go in with the wire wall vinegar solution to make it go that black. But the problem is with doing all of that, you're adding a significant amount of water to your wood, which means you're going to have to really let that all those pieces acclimatise and get back to being nice and dry again before you can put any finish on it, especially an oil-based finish. It's just not ever going to dry because the wood's soaking wet. Just use Indian ink. It's that simple. One coat never fails, works every time. Job done. Some of you hate using Osmo, you think it's overpriced, whatever. I use it all the time and pretty much everything. Never had a problem with it. You can see as well the tannic acid wire wall solution leaves everything looking navy blue. But as soon as you hit the finish, you can see it just goes jet black. Which I was worried at the time that it wasn't going to go, but you know, it turned out all right in the end. And now you can see what I mean by the legs being at the same height as the tabletop, that they also needed to be bare wood. Turned out quite nice in the end. Just a simple little, little stool, really. Uh, just a simple little side table, really. To all my super fans, Joe, Dickie Morris, Justin Walsh, Mark Dana, Kevin O'Connor, Derek Hansen, Jimmy Frick, Gunnarsson AI, Jorvik Workshop, Peter Davidoff, Scott Broomfield, and Paul Hodgson. Thank you. So if you like the cut of my jib, please like and subscribe. Share if you're really feeling kinky. And uh, we'll see each other again. Be lucky.